Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. All right, so this person here says, If AW gets stronger, doesn't that hurt WWE's leverage for big money, which would help USA? If there are two networks wanting wrestling and Raw is the only show, they have to bid high. If there are two networks and two companies, they wouldn't have to pay as much. Well, listen, obviously, obviously, that's the case. But if you're WWE, I mean, right now, WWE is on the way down. Look at where they were two years ago and look at where they are now, okay? You can't argue that there has been a massive decline. I forget what it was, but it was like since last year, they're down like, what is it? It was 25 or 30% in 18 to 49. That's a gigantic. Everyone talks about streaming and this and that. This decline is significantly larger than TV as a whole, okay? They're, They're losing interest rapidly, all right? This deal ends in 2024, and they got to renegotiate in about two years. Where are we going to be in two years? All right? You look at AEW, they are not declining like this. In a lot of ways, WWE's demos are going down as AEW's demos are going up, even with NXT going head-to-head. So, at this point, if, if things continue in this direction, even if they slow down AEW's growth, what is the perception in television? You've got this NXT show. That, you know, it it looks like about once a month, they can't even break the top 50 in persons 18 to 49. If they ran on Tuesday, they would regularly be in the top 10. You're willing to have the perception that you can't even be in the top 50 once a month in 18 to 49, just so you can slow the growth of this other company? 25 million for that? That's the point. Like, okay, so for $25 million, you can't even get in the top 50 once a month. For $40 million, for $40 million, AEW's demos are catching up with Raw and SmackDown for $40 million. They've got a $1.3 billion television deal between these two. Now, granted, the way that USA Network is going, yes, USA Network is probably going to renew Raw, maybe for the same amount. I mean, who knows what will happen in two years? Maybe more, maybe less. I don't even know. But the amount of money that is being paid for SmackDown, like when it's time for Fox to renew wrestling, I mean, they're going to look at all of these demos and you got one show that, I mean, for four, dude, they could, AW could charge double what they're doing now. They're already a better value than SmackDown. So you want to continue this, this decline of NXT just to try to slow the momentum of AW. If I'm WWE, it's like, dude, I want my demos for NXT to be strong. I don't want this perception that we can't attract younger viewers, which as each week goes by, that perception is going to grow in the television industry when they're going head to head with another show and that other show is is consistently in the top 15 until last week they were in the top 10 for like six straight weeks and the only demo that WWE can win is over 50s. Why would you keep that perception and increase that perception when you can move the show to Tuesday and end that perception because they'll probably regularly be in the top 10 in 18 to 49. I don't know why you continue to want to give the industry uh, the impression that you're a cold product because sooner or later somebody is going to catch on to that you know and they're always going to have a home WWE will probably always with NBC Universal and Xfinity. It's a as time goes on, these are not just TV companies; they're multi-platform entertainment companies. So they're always going to have a home somewhere. But when it starts coming down to that dollar again, I mean, you know, they seem to somehow still somehow some way convince people that they're worth more and more each time around. But that was without any competition. It, much less one that's owned by a television network or basically run by a television network and the head of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, it's now they actually have some stiff competition constantly getting rubbed in their face, and they have not been accentuating their positives with, with NXT going up against AEW. And it would help, again, it would help everybody, everybody, but mostly yourself, to get that show off of there and on to a Tuesday or something like that. It's just not working right now. It's not benefiting you currently. And why you want to continue to do this, I have no idea. The thing, too, with with 
younger viewers is AEW has been around for a year, a year. You've been sliding now for how many years? Since what? 1990, what? 2002? When, when did it, when did the drop, you know, start to happen? And now the bottom seems to be falling out and you are at your lowest point now that you've ever been. I mean, I just can't, at some point, somebody is going to attach a monetary value to that. And sooner or later, that's going to happen. And what position are they going to be in at that point to then scramble and explain things? And I hate to say this, if Vince McMahon passed away today, just or poof, just disappeared today, what would the confidence be? You know, all you know, right now, everything's you know good because Vince is there to a degree. If he goes, then what happens? And what that's how does, actually a great point. Let me jump in for NBC, a second. Well, Listen, give me just here one last thing before you go on, and then you can have it. Same thing goes with somebody comes into NBC. Like I said, any they WWE is always going to have a home somewhere on. Well, TV. wait, hold that thought because I want to talk about what you just said. Hold that thought okay. for a second. As they say, listen, everybody. Here's another thing for everyone to think about. Vince is 75 years old, okay? Listen, I'm not saying he's going to die anytime soon, but as Mike said, let's say that Vince, poof, he gets on Elon Musk's UFO and goes to the moon or Mars, okay? He's out of here, all right? So who's going to take over? I'm going to tell you who's going to take over. Triple H, all right? So what happens when it's Triple H's turn to take over? Let's say next year Triple H has to take over. And the stock market looks at Triple H's show, which because they're so damn stubborn, they left on Wednesdays, and it can't even make the top 15, 18, and 49. You know what's going to happen to WWE stock when the guy that is set to take over from Vince, his track record is he can't even break the top 50 once a month? Dude, move that show to Tuesday. They'll regularly be in the top 10. And then if Triple H has to take over, he can go, look, I've been running my own show. I'm in the top 10 all the time. That's another thing. Well, and that's and say that happens, and as that happens, we get a new head at NBC Universal that goes, you know, I really like uh, what we did back in the day with Scrubs and those shows, and I see all of this money we're spending here where that money could be spent in this way, and, you know, I never really liked wrestling much anyway. What can we do about this? Where You know, is this really worth the amount of money we're putting into? Just things like that happen, and once they happen... And you don't know when they're going to happen. And WWE has been, I think, very look, they have done a lot of great things. When you look at their production, how they run a business, there are a lot of things that, you know, WWE, there's a reason that they are as powerful and as strong as they are. And whether you like them or not, they have, you know, they are an incredible machine that they have formed. But, you know, as soon as you start to show a little bit of rust, you know, that, that can start to get dangerous. And I believe right now they're showing a little bit of rust. So, again, we're all fantasy booking out into the future here to a point. The right now is they're sucking wind. And it's obvious that when they are not head-to-head -head with AEW, they are in a much better spot for not only themselves when it comes to the rating, but also for USA. Chat, Twitch homies, bros, I understand. I'm well aware that the point of NXT on Wednesdays is to... I know that, okay? But I'm looking at the other aspects of it besides that yes. that they are not looking at. And the look, perception that you can't get anybody except old people to watch this show. Somebody else in the chat goes, how come the investors don't ask about uh, why uh, we're down 30% in 18 to 49 over two years? Listen... Because these institutional investors, I realize I'm hard on them. I say they don't know what's going on. That is true. But they're examining 50 different companies, okay? WWE is one of them. They don't sit here and listen to this. Actually, some of them do. But the vast majority don't sit here and listen to shows like this and read The Observer and everything like that, okay? But you know what? This was the year. This was the year. It was the second conference call of this year that investors started actually asking some pretty good questions. Okay, now they haven't caught on to everything yet, but WWE is going to rene be renegotiating in two years now. Even though it's, been, it's taken a while, the day is going to come when they're going to figure out what's going on here. Why are you losing on Wednesdays to this show? Why are you only attracting people over 50? Why are your 
18 to 34 persons non-existent. What's go- They're going to ask those questions. Now, no one's asking those questions yet. So WWE is doing what they're doing. If it's me, I am proactive, and I try to turn this around now so that I can make some great deals in 2022. Instead of sitting here and focusing on the now and trying to crush this, which, by the way, isn't working. <laughs> that, that's the other point. They're trying to prevent AEW. It's not working. They're losing practically every week. I think they've won nine times in what? How many weeks has it been? 50? Almost 50? So, dude, we got to think. We got to have forward thinking here. Not just the right here and now. Back in a moment. Observer Live. 